Howdy folks, my name is Logan, and today we're going to be looking at my third and final mage guide. And having looked at uh, frost and arcane already, that obviously only leaves fire. And I've been talking about this video in the comments of those, of those other two videos for so long <laughs> that it's about time I actually put this out. So here we go. Now I first want to uh, say before we get into the guide part of this, that this guide is dedicated for or geared more towards new players new players both to the game and to fire and also to anybody uh, who's trying to play fire and is just maybe struggling a little bit and is in need of going back to the basics okay so that's really what we're going to be going through here we're going to be starting with the very basics and then working our way up a little bit so hopefully hopefully this guy doesn't end up too long i know i have a habit of uh rambling and or talking about details for way too long so let's get into this all right so let's let's first talk about what's what's the very basic idea so a fire operates on the idea of uh, its abilities critting the target so you want your spells to crit the target and the reason you do that is because you have a uh, passive uh, buff that you gain called hot streak and you gain hot streak after your spells crit two times in a row so twice consecutively so if you get one crit and then your second spell does not crit you wasted the first crit. So you need to get those two spells uh, to crit uh, back to back from each other. And I will, uh, I guess I'll look right now at it. And that um, thing, as I said, is called Hot Streak. So if you want to go back and read that on your own, then I highly encourage reading through a lot of that stuff. It's one of the things that I think a lot of new players miss is just reading the tooltips. As boring as that is, I know. But so we generate these, uh, this Hot Streak with our abilities and our main abilities are Fire Blast, Fire Ball, Pyro Blast, and our artifact ability, Phoenix Flames, and also uh, Scorch. But our main three are Fire Blast, Fire Ball, and Pyro Blast. So we're going to be casting these spells, and we're going to try and uh, game the system a little bit because of how, the, uh, how these abilities all interact with each other and how they work in the system. So Fire Ball is our main filler ability. We're going to be just, is, this is just a plain old, you know, this is what you see people casting when they think about World of Warcraft back from, you know, during classic, uh, back in the day. This is just as straightforward as it gets. But then we have another ability called Pyroblast, and this one is, well, this one has some, uh, some more unique things that we're going to be using to make this do what it does best, and that is doing a lot of damage. Pyroblast is our main damage dealing ability. It hits the hardest of everything that we have. So, how do you make it do that? Well, because well, if you look, it has a 3.55 second cast at my amount of haste. That is an asinine high cast time. <laughs> okay, so we're not ever going to be casting this, uh, just standing there casting it. It's just not going to happen. Uh, unless you have the legendary bracers, but we're not going to be covering uh, legendary, at least rotational wise, how legendaries affect rotation for fire in this guide. But the legendary bracers, you would be hard casting this. We're not talking about that. So you're not ever going to be hard casting pyroblast except on the pull before the boss is pulled. So moving on, we have fire blast. Fire blast is really interesting actually. It has two charges by default, three if you take a talent called flame on. Uh, but has two charges, and each charge is guaranteed a critical strike. Not only is it guaranteed a critical strike, but you can cast it while casting another ability. So you can be in mid-cast a fireball and cast a fire blast, and you don't stop casting your fireball. All right. So let me see if I can, if I can demonstrate that real quick. And yes, I am in the old-fashioned Warlord to Draenor Garrison, just because I felt like changing it up a little bit. But so here we go, I'm gonna cast Fireball. And I'm gonna cast this next one, and halfway through the cast, I'm gonna cast a Fire Blast. Fire Blast, there we go. That's all that there is to it, simple as that. And it's very important that you uh, understand that concept very quickly, because if you don't, you're gonna be very much not playing the spec right. You need to be able to use your Fire Blasts on demand instantly when they need to happen. And the reason we do that is, is because we're looking for those going back to our hot streak buff hot streak as i mentioned earlier from getting two consecutive critical strikes in a row 
makes our Pyroblast instant cast and deal a little bit extra damage in another way. But the main thing is that it makes the Pyroblast instant cast. So now that hopefully this spec's starting to make a little bit more sense to you now. You're going to try and generate these procs all for the sole purpose of getting instant cast Pyroblasts. The more instant cast Pyroblasts that you cast, the more total Pyroblasts you're going to cast and that is going to very directly equal more damage. What a concept, right? We gotta get out of combat from this thing. Okay. So how do we try and get, make sure we're always getting two crits all together? Well, you may have saw just a little bit ago, there was uh, the notification on my screen from the proc. The hot streak is the big proc on the side. But there's a little one that's a little bit smaller, fits inside a little bit, called heating up. And that heating up proc is the game saying, hey, you just crit one time. If you crit a second time right after this, then you're going to get a hot streak. And so we need to be, be very aware of when we have that heating up proc. The reason is we're going to be casting fireballs, and whenever we see, whenever one of those fireballs crit the target, we're going to get heating up. And then we're going to go, okay, my next spell needs to crit the target. So rather than cast another fireball or let the fireball hit the target, we're going to immediately cast our fire blast, and that will guarantee us our hot streak. So now we have Hot Streak, and we're still only halfway through our cast of Fireball. What we're going to do then is we're going to immediately cast our Instant Cast Pyroblast right afterwards. So Fireball will finish casting with Hot Streak, and we're going to immediately cast Pyroblast at the same time. What will happen then is both spells will travel from you at the same time, or virtually the same time, uh, and hit the target at virtually the same time. What's the benefit of that? Well, for one, if they both crit, you're going right back to a hot streak. And that is the whole point of the of this of fire's main rotation, is putting both of those spells together with hot streak and hoping that they both crit. Now obviously they're not always going to both crit, but that's that's the idea. And I said earlier as well though that if the first spell crits and the second one does not, you lose the the you lose heating up is what you lose. But there's a uh, under the hood kind of mechanic in the game that if they hit if the two sp two abilities hit the spell or yeah hit the spell hit the target within a short enough amount of time something like I want to say 0.2 seconds or something really small something very small don't quote me on that number I'm sort of spitballing there but. Uh, the point of it, that is, if they hit the target approximately at the same time, you don't lose anything. So if the first one crits and the second one doesn't, you still have heating up because they hit pretty much at the same freaking time. Uh, so don't worry about that too much. But so going back to the rotation part of it, so let's recap what I more or less just said. So we're going to be casting Fireball. Yeah, we're going to be casting Fireball, and we're fishing for it, one of them to crit. We want the Fireball to crit the target. As soon as one does, we're going to gain heating up, okay? And then once we have heating up, the game says, hey, you crit once, so we're going to follow that up with Fire Blast because Fire Blast is always a critical strike. So that's our guaranteed uh, crit. So then we're halfway through our fire, our fire Ball cast. We cast our off the cooldown, castable while casting, guaranteed crit Fire Blast, and then we have heating up, or yeah, we have Hot Streak from heating up. We finish our Fireball cast, now that we have Hot Streak, and we immediately cast our Pyroblast, consuming the Hot Streak. And then we go right back and we do the same thing again, and we react to whatever uh, uh, crits that those two abilities may or may not have given. So let's see if I can demonstrate here. So we're going to start out with Fireball. And remember, this won't hit until it hits the target. Now, I hope, <laughs> I hope you saw how uh, fast that was. All right. So we're going to go back, Fireball, Fire Blast, Pyro Blast. Now they both crit, so we're going right back again. Fireball, Pyro Blast. Only one of them crit. Fireball, Fire Blast, Pyro Blast. See, you kind of see the pattern here? I know it may seem a little confusing at first, uh, but it's really not too bad. You just got to practice it a little bit. Fireball, Pyro Blast, they both crit. Back to the same deal. We're always trying to follow up uh, with, we're always gonna be like weaving in fireball casts. 
That way we always have our fireball and pyroblast hitting the target at approximately the same time so stuff like this happens. This is the dream right here. This is what you're aiming for. This is why you need a pretty fair amount of crit as fire. Alright, so this is pretty much it. This is this is just the basic rotation. Just kind of going back and doing our thing here. We're just keeping these procs rolling nice and smooth. Alright. So, <clears throat> there is uh, there is a passive that you have in case you don't have a lot of crits. So it's super important that you have a pretty decent amount of crits so your fireballs can crit. So you're not standing there casting endless amounts of fireballs and none of them critting. That's never any fun. So we have this thing called Enhanced Pyrotechnics. Uh, now I am using a set bonus which changes the, the number of this, uh, but normally it's 10%. So every time you cast a fireball and it does not crit, you gain a stacking buff called Enhanced Pyrotechnics. And each stack of that buff of Enhanced Pyrotechnics uh, increases the chance that your next fireball will crit by 10%. So there's an interesting thing, a little uh, tidbit, if you're starting to get really comfortable with the spec, is you can track, uh, track the stacks of your Enhanced Pyrotechnics. And you have to keep in mind and do a little bit of math in the back of your head. You know your critical strike chance. Everything has a 15% increased chance to crit. 10, yeah, 15% increased chance to crit. So I'm at 53, add 15, so now we're at 68, all right? And now I've got um, two stacks of enhanced pyrotechnics. So 68 plus two, st uh, two stacks times 10 is 20, plus 68, that puts us at 88% chance to crit. Make a lot of sense. So you can kind of start to uh, predict and save charges of your fire blast or your phoenix flames which we'll cover immediately after this um, since those are guaranteed crits you can kind of start to save those charges and predict say okay i've got like a four percent chance not to crit on this next fireball i'm going to save my fire blast so that i have it later uh, and it just helps you save charges so there's, there's stuff like that you can do i don't do not do that if you're still very new to this, this that's more of a, a side note once you start really getting the hang of it. Uh, if nothing else, this is just a nice passive. Don't worry about it. It'll make you feel better that you're not getting screwed but with uh, lack of critical strikes. So Phoenix Flames is our artifact ability. And Phoenix Flames fires out a big old Phoenix. And when it hits the target, it is a guaranteed crit, just like Fire Blast. It's not off the global cooldown uh, like Fire Blast is whatsoever. But so Phoenix Flames works the same way though with the with the, uh, the being a guaranteed crit. So we can use that to generate hot streaks or heating up procs. Uh, something also to keep in mind though, as we talked about earlier, between Fireball and Pyroblast hitting the target at about the same time, that's a little bit more tricky with Phoenix Flames because the flight time of this is different from your Fireball and Pyroblast, so that it will it will arrive to the target at a slightly different time. So that being said. Uh, if I generate a hot streak here, okay, so there's a hot streak, and I cast a fireball and a phoenix flames. There you go. The second fireball got to the target before the phoenix flames, and it canceled it. Well, it, and the second fireball did not uh, crit, so it canceled my first heating up, but then uh, phoenix flames got there shortly afterwards and gave me heating up again. So the, the point of that story is don't try to uh, chain them together the same way. Uh, what a good practice is, though, is casting Fireball and Phoenix Flames when you have no heating up or hot streak proc. Because then you can don't, you don't, you're not guaranteed not to lose anything that way, at least. So the Fireball is always going to get there first. So that's the point of what I wanted to make there. So Phoenix Flames, guaranteed crit. You can use it to generate your hot streaks and stuff, as you saw there. But uh, it's also a very strong AoE ability. So if you notice... Uh, well, now I'm attacking this thing over here. Oh, no, I'm not. That's, that's weird. Okay. My eyes are deceiving me. Uh, anyways, if you cast Phoenix Flame, you'll notice that it jumps to the next target. And it uh, does splash damage and will jump to the next target. And it does exceptionally more with the uh, fourth golden trait from your weapon. It's very strong AoE ability. Uh, still, if you're in a boss fight or something, especially a raid boss, usually better always not to cap you never want to cap at your three charges uh, but is a very good aoe like burst kind of ability 
So, that's that. Let's take a look at talents now real quick, now that we got our basic rotation down. So we at level 15, we have Pyromaniac. And Pyromaniac, here's the short story of this one. Don't use it. Uh, it reads like it would be good, and it sims on simulators that it, as it is good, but the problem is, in real playtime, it's just too unpredictable. It's very RNG reliant, and a lot of times, when it does proc, it won't matter anyways because you're basically going to be wasting that proc because of the way, you know, we're human players after all. It's just, it's just not reliable enough to use, and you don't usually benefit much from it. On the other hand, Conflagration is very reliable. It, uh, it just places a dot on the target, and this is actually a very good AoE ability because as that dot ticks, it has a chance to flare up and that flare-up will then do additional damage to tar targets around it. But I actually recommend this, and a lot of other people do as well, just as a passive single target damage, or, yeah, single target talent. A great go-to, definitely what I recommend uh, at earlier levels and in most cases. So this is the one you're going to see a lot of people say, oh, fire starter's better. Well, there's an asterisk next to that statement. In high-level content, High level content, Firestarter is better. In high level content with the legendary Fire Bracers, Firestarter is better. So, the reason being for that though, your spells are guaranteed crit against targets above 90% health. And because of the way the Bracers work, uh, again, the legendary Bracers, that makes this ability and the Bracers much stronger, or this talent rather. And the reason I say at high level content is because if you're pulling a boss in an LFR, the chances are that boss is going to be below 90% health in less than 15 seconds. So you're going to get 15 seconds of usage out of this talent. Is that really worth it? No, it's not. On the other hand, if you're pulling a mythic fallen avatar in Tomb of Sargeras, he's going to be above 90% health for a pretty considerable amount of time. In that case, Firestarter is awesome. If you do use Firestarter because you're doing that kind of stuff, your opening rotation is going to be different. You're not going to be using Combustion, which is your main cooldown, which we'll cover as soon as we get through talents. Uh, Firestarter, you'll be in. You'll basically just be casting all your stuff without Combustion. As soon as the target drops below 90% health, then you'll be using Combustion. Combustion, I suppose we'll talk about it now. Should have talked about it earlier. Uh, gives you 100% increased critical strike chance. All of your abilities crit during combustion. And uh, increase your, the damage from your mastery, and your mastery is called Ignite. And I, I suppose we'll cover that now too. We're really deterring off of talents now, but uh, all in good time. So our mastery, Ignite, a percentage of the damage you deal from your direct damage spells. That being all of the ones we've talked about so far. A percentage of that damage is applied as a dot to the target. And that dot, Ignite, then has a chance to spread to nearby targets every two seconds. And this is one reason you're seeing Fire Mage is played a lot more in uh, Mythic Tomb of Sargeras, especially over top of Frost and Arcane. Just because of the way some of those fights work and the spread out cleave and the uh, Ignite damage is just really, really good. So it, that's that's your mastery. That's your ignite. This it can get crazy with uh, multi-target stuff. As that's the, as you're building up big ignites and it's spreading to everything, that can get kind of crazy. So now that we've covered combustion and mastery, let's go back to our talents. So we covered level 15, level 30. We have pretty much shimmer, and that's about it in my opinion. Uh, shimmer replaces blank off the global cooldown castable while casting. So if I cast this, you can cast Shimmer, go all over the place, and keep right on casting. Uh, not to mention, Fire has a artifact ability called Cauterizing Blink. Every time you Shimmer or Blink, you gain health back. So, the second charge of, of Shimmer is pretty nice for that survivability. Um, Blast Wave is just weird. Blazing Soul, also just weird. I don't personally don't see the usage for these, so Shimmer's the only choice there, in my opinion. But if you like the other two, knock yourself out. Level 45, another interesting one here. We have mirror images being, in a lot of cases, the go-to single target talent. 
Uh, however, it's my personal opinion and experience that uh, Mirror Images falls off and loses, starts losing to a rune of power as your gear increases. As your spells start hitting harder, your combustion windows are becoming much stronger. I think rune of power then starts to take over. Uh, mirror Images is just a fire and forget. They do their thing and that's it. Rune of Power, you get two charges, 40 second cooldown, increases your uh, spell damage by 40% while you stand within that rune. And that rune lasts for 10 seconds. And, and Fire is very, uh, is becoming, as gear increases, is becoming very front loaded again, the same way that it was during Emerald Nightmare that Blizzard was like, no, 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 we can't have that. So they nerfed it and made the damage be, your damage kind of spread out over time rather than being all concentrated into a 10 to 15 second window and then being useless for the next minute and 20 seconds and then going back into being an absolute glass cannon for the next 10 seconds. Rune of Power sort of starts, we're starting to come back to that again. So Rune of Power plays into that nicely. Uh, Encanter's Flow, uh, if you're doing a lot of movement, Mirror Images ain't gonna be for you. Encanter's Flow, great option. Uh, this is just the passive, you know, cyclical damage buff that you get. Level 60, we have first Alexstrasza's Fury. And Alexstrasza's Fury makes our Dragon's Breath. And our Dragon's Breath is this guy. Does a AoE damage in a cone in front of you. Pretty short range, melee range. Also a disorient. But Alexstrasza's Fury makes Dragon's Breath always critical strike. And it contributes to Hot Streak. So that again becomes another ability that we can start rotating into our rotation uh, to start guaranteeing ourselves more heating ups and more hot streaks. Our other one is called Flame On. Uh, and in general, Flame On is going to be better, even in AoE situations where Alexstrasza's Fury can be very good. Uh, in most cases, I think Flame On still is a little bit better. If you're just doing pure AoE, Alexstrasza's Fury all the way. But if you're doing a uh, good level or decently level uh, mythic plus uh, flame on still better just for the uh, the boss damage you're going to gain out of it and you'll be able to use more you'll just get more abilities out in my opinion so then going on to controlled burn controlled burn suffers from the same problem that pyromaniac does it's super rng dependent or reliant and you just can't depend on it and when you do when it does finally proc you end up uh wasting it anyways in most cases so i don't recommend using this either level 75 does not really matter uh, frenetic speed when you cast scorch you gain a speed buff at least you can benefit from that at some amount during a raid boss fight whereas these two you're probably not but they don't really matter level 90 this one's interesting too i, I like this tier this uh, talent here the exception of unstable magic <laughs> but it's living living bomb uh, let me go to the other training dummies, but Living Bomb places a dot on the target that's a very short dot and uh, see 3.2 seconds and when Living Bomb expires it explodes and deals damage to everything around it. When it explodes that first time everything that it, it deals damage to is then also affected by a new Living Bomb. So you apply it to one target it detonates and spreads to every target that it hits. All right, so let me put this on the, I don't think I have this on my bars. Do I? No. All right, so for the time being, I'm gonna put this here. So Living Bomb, so you can see it ticking down. It's gonna explode here, boof. Now it's spread to these other two targets. Now they're gonna explode. There you go. The really interesting part of this is as your number of targets increases, the damage that Living Bomb does increases exponentially because each everything explodes in a radius around it. And when you've got two mobs exploding in a radius, well, then you got, you know, damage from two explosions onto each target. On the other hand, if you put it out and it's 15 targets exploding, now you've got 15 targets exploding on 15 targets. <laughs> and so that's, that's kind of how that works. So then we have Unstable Magic. And Unstable Magic uh, makes your, does the same thing as your other uh, mage specs do. Your Fireball has a chance to deal additional damage to the target and a little bit of extra damage around it. That's your single target talent. It's as boring as it gets, but that's all we've got for single target uh, for as fire. So if, then we have Flame Patch, though. And Flame Patch, whenever you cast your Flame Strike, which we'll, uh, I also did not talk about yet. Boy, this is 
if this guy's any good, it'll be a miracle. <laughs> this is everything I seem to be forgetting. But so Flame Strikes are AoE ability. This also consumes Hot Streaks. So you can use Pyroblast or Flame Strike on your Hot Streaks. But Flame Strike is a big long cast. Cast down a pillar of flames. This is your AoE ability. There you go. That's Flame Strike. Uh, so Flame Patch. Whenever you cast Flame Strike, it leaves a patch of flames on the ground. Who would have guessed? So it leaves a patch of flames on the ground, dealing damage to everything that stand within that patch over 8 seconds. So that means if stuff's moving around a lot, you're really not going to gain much from Flame Patch. But if it's relatively stationary, Flame Patch can become really good. And I forget the number of targets where a Living Bomb becomes better. Uh, or, you know, Living Bomb generally not used in most raid situations. Unless you're scumbagging some kind of, you know, ad fight or whatever. But Flame Patch and Unstable Magic, as of this point in Tomb of Sargeras, with Antorus coming probably in the next two weeks, I would, would be my guess. BlizzCon is this weekend as of recording this. Uh, but, so that's that. Level 100, we have Kindling. Kindling, every time you're... Uh, the three abilities, fire, Fireball, Pyroblast, and Fireblast, Critical Strike, you reduce the cooldown on Combustion by one second. And this is actually also becoming more popular in Mythic Raiding. And the reason in Mythic Raiding, for one, because your a lot of your damage is coming from your Ignite, and your Combustion directly increases your Ignite damage. More Combustions, higher Ignite. Pretty simple. Kindling allows you to cast more Combustions. Also, uh... In Mythic Raiding, most of the time your gear level is going to be considerably higher, giving you more crit, which means more crits equal uh, higher reduced cooldown on your combustion, improving the benefit of kindling. So that's that. Uh, generally, this is going to be used in multi-target stuff, as I said, because of uh, your ignite damage that you'll benefit from with extra combustions. Cinderstorm. Here's an interesting one as well. Cinderstorm fires out in an arc in front of you. So it's actually, it's literally going to be go out in an arc. So if Cinderstorm fires six cinders out towards the, well, like I said, in an arc, and those six cinders kind of have a mind of their own once they start hitting something. And they'll deal additional damage to targets that have ignite on them. So this is what Cinderstorm looks like. Let's see if I can get a good, uh, uh, good view here. So Cat Cinderstorm, Keep in mind that its travel location is going to be a little funky. So I'm actually going to play, position my body that I'm facing actually more towards this target, but I'm aiming for that one. So Cat Center Storm. Boom. There you go. So you can see, if you looked, if you considered my train of thought there, how I'm positioning my body, because the thing goes out directly in front of you all the time. So if I'm facing this way, oops, pressed the wrong button, um, it's going to go that way. So you got to be very uh, conscious of which direction you're facing and how close you are to the target. If you're standing on top of the thing, you know, a good, like, say, five, five yards away, this is going to go out, well, I mean, let me say ten, like ten yards-ish. This is going to go out, and it's pretty much going to miss this target in the middle, right? So it's pretty, like one cinder hit that thing there, and the rest of them hit this guy. So that's why you got to really be careful of your distance from the target when using Cinder Storm. This is also the ability that you're going to see, like, every Fire Mage known to man pulling uh, dungeons by accident. Because these cinders can go through walls, climb up hills, all kinds of crazy stuff. And next thing you know, you'll have an entire mob of stuff that was never meant to be pulled chasing you down. And then everyone's going to hate you. So use it at your own risk. It does do very good damage, though, both single target and especially AoE. Uh, so I really, my recommendation for this is Make sure you know the group you're running with if you're, you're going to use this. Somebody that'll forgive you if and when you pull everything with it. Um, but next we have Meteor. Meteor is our general go-to single target talent. And I love this ability. I love how it looks. So Meteor, you place it on the ground. And so it's a ground target ability. And it's going to hurl a big Meteor out of the sky. It's going to fall on a target. And it does add to your ignite damage. But the damage it does when it hits the ground is split evenly amongst your targets. And then it's going to leave a patch of flames, or a meteor burn in this case, on the ground that will deal damage to everything within it. So this is this is what meteor looks like. So there's that. There it comes. Boof. And it hits really hard when it crits. It is an awesome ability for generating huge ignites during your combustion. 
And I should note, I'm using a, uh, a macro for for uh, Meteor, and that Meteor is just at Cursor Meteor. So, show tooltip slash cast at Cursor Meteor. And it's also, uh, I have it exchanging with my Cinder Storm, so those are always on the same button. But that just makes it so I don't have to click the ground with Meteor. So those are our talents. That's it. Let's take a look at stats really quick. Uh, and some people are going to probably disagree with me with this because their character doesn't have the same stat priorities as mine does or as yours might. That's just the nature of the beast in Legion, okay? There is no spec in the game that has the same stat values as the next per person. It's just the way that it works. However, for new characters, new players, Critical Strike, you cannot go wrong. Critical Strike, you need an amount of Critical Strike. And generally, I recommend aiming for between 50 and 65%, okay? So mine's a, little, a whisker low, but certainly well within the uh, decent range. And you might be thinking, Mastery's gotta be pretty good, right? Mastery, you know, puts, your, uh, puts that dot on the target that makes all your spells. Uh, well, yeah, puts the dot on the target based on how much damage your spells do. And with your stuff hitting hard and critting all the time, Mastery's gotta be pretty good. On single target, nope. <laughs> Uh, not really. Mastery scales very, very slowly in single target damage. However, add a one more target, two more targets. Mastery starts to scale just at an extreme high, extremely high rate, and becomes very, very good. But in single target, critical strikes what you want. Mastery, not so much. Uh, and then we have haste versatility doing their thing. Haste is very good for single target. Versatility, also very good for single target. Um, and so I'm going to say the same thing I said in the Arcane Guide. You really need to sim yourself. Uh, if you're really trying to min-max your, your uh, damage, you want to know what gear is best, go to raidbots.com with and using the Simulation Craft add-on in-game. Uh, using that add-on, copy your character info, paste it into sim... Uh, into the raidbots.com and generate your own stat weights. It's as simple as that to do. Uh, and then you'll know what your stat weights are for your character for single target or whatever you set the sim to run at on raidbots. So that's what I recommend. Recapping, critical strike. You need critical strike. Uh, that's the best general stat to shoot for. After that, haste, versatility, mastery. Uh start doing a lot of AoE or you're doing spread damage uh, mastery starts to become just really really good outpacing intellect critical strike everything that dot damage is gets to be crazy so that's that let's take a quick quick look at legendaries uh, if I could open the right button I know I said I wasn't gonna cover these but I didn't want to cover rotational changes because several legendaries change your rotation the first one being the elephant in the room, these stupid bracers. And I say stupid because I don't have them, so I'm a little salty. Um, whenever you uh, consume a hot streak, you have a 15% chance that your next non-instant cast pyroblast, pyroblast, sorry, uh, deals 300% increased damage. 300% off of an ability that already hits really, really hard. That's that. Uh, that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, after that, the next really good one is the belt. So Scorch, which we didn't really talk about too much. Scorch does, uh, so we'll talk about it now. Scorch is castable while moving, which is one nice thing. So you can always be doing some amount of damage when you're running across the room. So you just cast Scorch, just doing his thing. It's damage. Okay, so I just casted, how many did I do there? I casted four Scorch, five Scorches and the average that it hit for was 94k at a 60% crit rating. <laughs> it does, like, oh, the damage it does is horrible. Um, so, but the belt, whenever a target is below 30% health, Scorch deals 350% increased damage and is a guaranteed crit. So now, all of a sudden, you're magically casting Scorch, you're replacing Fireball with Scorch when the target's below that amount of health. The belt, Bracer, very, very good combo. Uh, beyond that, the ring, the chart of the Exodar gives you extra time warp or heroism. 
self-explanatory, also very good for fire. Uh, Soul of the Archmage, nah, not so much. Really, mostly because you're going to be using Flame on anyways. So, and it, that's what the, that's the talent that it gives you. Uh, another one is the Legendary Head. Uh, this one makes your, your Dragon's Breath deal extra damage and increases the range considerably. When you have the, if you have the helmet and are using the helmet, then Alex Straza's Fury talent becomes much, much better for obvious reasons. Uh, so that's, that's pretty much the legendaries. The shoulders uh, generate a meteor. They're okay. They're not bad. Uh, those are pretty much your main damage dealing abilities. Oh, something that's uh, interesting. Kill Jaden's Burning Wish. So to the best of my knowledge, I can't think of any specs in the game that can buff the damage from Kill Jaden's Wish. So if you put 10,000, you know, percent increased spell damage or fire damage, whatever, Kill Jaden's Wish is still going to hit for 1.1 mil. Fire, on the other hand, has a passive buff through its weapon called uh, Pyretic Incantation that increases the critical strike damage you deal by 2% each time you crit. As far as I know, unless it's changed in the last couple weeks, uh, that passive Pyretic Incantation does buff Kill Jaden's Burning Wish, and that can stack up to five times, so you have up to 10% increased crit damage. So now you can do 10% more critical strike damage with your Kill Jaden's Burning Wish, which is kind of silly when, whenever there's a huge pack of mobs, uh, as you can imagine. Just pop that Kill Jaden's in there that's doing 10% more damage. It's kind of ridiculous. So anyways, that's the main gist of most of it. So let's, to conclude all of this here, let's do a, an opening rotation. So this is going to be pure single target. And I'm going to use heroism here, or use time warp. Uh, now these dummies are low level, so you got to bear with me on that. They're going to die pretty quick. The whole point of what I'm going to be doing here is just the, my basic single rotation, but I'm going to be using combustion now. So this is going to be our combustion rotation intro, I guess. And so, du so during combustion, and this is very, very important, I recommend going to alteredtime.com and checking out the listed rotations for this because this rotation is very static. Because you have a guaranteed critical strike chance, uh, nothing should really change. There's not much RNG involved with this, like, whatsoever. So the idea with combustion is, in our opening rotation, is we're going to uh, start by trying to generate at least a hot streak, or at least a, a heating up proc. Hot streak would be great, but at least a heating up proc. As soon as we do, we're going to be using, uh, in this case, Rune of Power, and then activating combustion after a Rune of Power is finished casting. And you can cast combustion whenever, during your, while you're casting something, while stuff's in midair, etc. So, uh, for the sake of this guide, I'm gonna try and generate, I'm gonna generate a hot streak. And then I'm going to put my Rune of Power down and then use combustion. When I use combustion, I'm not going to be hard casting Fireball, ever. The reason is, I'm gonna try and, the whole point is to get as many instant cast Pyroblasts that are now guaranteed to crit, during that combustion window, as many as possible. So I'm going to be weaving in uh, with our hot streaks, fireball or fire blast, pyroblast, fire blast, pyroblast, fire blast, pyroblast, phoenix flames, pyroblast, phoenix flames, pyroblast. You get the idea. And the reason is because these are instant cast, so that is going to allow us to get in more pyroblasts. Whenever we have no charges of either of these left, there's probably still going to be some time left on combustion. So I recommend actually getting a good uh, uh, weak aura or tummy when icon to help you track the time you have left on combustion. It'll be very important to, to uh, remember that. When it's almost over and you've got no charges of either your fire blast or uh, phoenix flames, we're going to uh, weave in some scorches. Remember I said earlier, scorches damage is terrible. But scorches is a pretty short cast time. It's shorter than fireball. So that can help us get in an extra uh, pyroblast or two at the end of our combustion. So let me give this a shot here. Hopefully I can manage to do this without screwing up uh, while talking and doing this rotation. So here goes nothing. I'm going to lead off the open with a hard cast pyroblast. Time warp. Now we got heating up, root of power, now combustion. Now we're tossing these out here. Oop, I'm going to use my meteor real quick. 
put that out there, start weaving in all these instant casts, pyro blasts. There we go. And that's gonna be it. Pop the second rune down since we're under heroism. Now we're going into our single target rotation that we talked about at the beginning of this video. All right, and that's it. Now, see, there's an example of what not to do. I just used that Phoenix Flames charge when I had heating up, which was essentially wasting it because I just didn't need to do it. And there I messed up again. See, see what I mean? It's tough to talk and, and uh, do this at the same time. But that's your rotation. So now you just go back to doing this, your single target rotation again, and that's all there is. Now, here I have Meteor back up off of cooldown. So now here I'm going to drop... This is what I do. I drop my rune... And then I cast my Meteor. I try to keep the two paired together. And there will be a time when the cooldowns are offset that uh, you won't be able to do that, but that's okay. Just try and make sure you always have at least one rune, at least one rune available for combustion. On a, that note of keeping things available for combustion, whenever you notice that combustion is coming back off the cooldown, it's very important to not be out of uh, Fire Blast or Phoenix Flames charges. You need to have some of those, otherwise your combustion rotation is going to suck. So whenever you see it coming to be close to off of cooldown again, sacrifice some of your normal rotation that you would normally do in, in uh, favor of saving one of those charges so that you always have something available uh, for your combustion. And here I'm even saving Meteor, which I wouldn't necessarily need to do, but in this case, we are. Right, so, if I can get that. Right, so, that'll work out. My next rune down, combustion. Drop my meteor. I don't lag out. There we go. And now, we're just doing the same thing we did earlier, which is just weaving in these instant casts for generating those hot streaks and just launching as many instant cast pyroblasts as we can. There we go. So that's it. Now my damage is inflated here because our ignite damage is hitting both of those targets for a pile of damage, as you can see. And also, as you can see, uh, at my gear level, the critical strike damage of Pyroblast is pretty, pretty substantial, which is why the whole point of the spec revolves around doing that. So, now that this video has gone way beyond the time I wanted it to be, I'm going to get the heck out of here before I talk anymore. So that's going to be it. Guys, if you enjoyed this video or if you learned something from it, I really hope uh, that you at least like the video and or subscribe. That would be great as well. Uh, or if you didn't like the video, leave me a dislike. That's, that's fine too. And leave your comments and, and whatnot, thoughts, uh, recommendations, words of advice, help for other players. Uh, as long as you're keeping your uh, advice or rotational advice for fire uh, civil. Because remember, this was for beginners. So, All right, that's going to be it for me. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.